closer or do you prefer to be over there? Okay. Say it. Tell me if you need me to speak louder, okay? No, no. Sit there and tell me, if, <laughs> sit where you like and tell me if you want to speak louder. Um, so we're, we're going to be continuing a piece we started last week. Um, I think you were both here last week. Did anyone happen to be here this year last week? Probably not. Huh? Yeah, the first three. 
Oh, perfect. Two minutes is um, I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, very briefly kind of the inyan that we're going to be continuing with. Basically, two main, I'd say, yesodot to summarize from what the Rebbe said last week. One is quoting the Rambam, an idea that appears in a lot of the uh, different svarim. Rambam has a beautiful Lashon where he says that Hashem is Hayodea, Hayadua, Yahamada. Which means and that, that God is all knowing doesn't just mean God knows everything. Doesn't just mean God's smarter than you are. <laughs> but that the quality of Da'at in its source, in 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 its divine source, the quality of Da'at is an all encompassing being, such that this idea of Hashem's knowledge spreading through everything is that Hashem knows, is the knower and that which is known. There's no separation between God knowing us. It's not like God figures us out or knows what's going to happen to us. It's, it's all within God's own self-knowledge. God is the knower. God is the that which is known and God is the knowledge itself. And the difference that, that this is brought up in, in this frame to explain how our consciousness works differently, which is, I don't know things. I have a um, capability of knowing things in human consciousness, but I have to come to know something else. And that thing that I know fills me with more knowledge, fills me with more awareness that I didn't have before. So there's an inherent lack and process of being filled or, or completed continuously for us. And a separation, this is specifically what the Rebbe is talking about, the separation between the knower, who is us, and that which we are trying to know, which in our context here is Torah. Okay? So the Rebbe says very beautifully, the big chidush that he, that he taught is that why is it that we want to know Torah? What drives us to want to know Torah? What drives us to seek it out? And what makes us happy when we... Like, why, does, why do we feel a sense of fulfillment or happiness or joy of knowing Torah? Why do we feel a sense of pain or discomfort when we can't know Torah, when we're missing Torah? Like, what is that? I don't feel that way about every knowledge in the world. What is it that draws me in particular? So he says something very beautiful. He says that when, as, as creation unfolds, this unified da'at, this unified divine da'at, as it trickles down, it becomes separated. And he says that the chelik yodea, the portion of, just come in. Anyone have a, you have a hat? Here, we got you covered. Come on, come on. <laughs> Is that what he's asking? Is that what he's asking? השיעור זה באנגלית. So, so the חלק יודע, the peace of God that is the knower, so to speak. He has a bottle, yeah. Um, and no, anything else you might need, tissues, whatever, like, חופשי. Um, the, the portion of the knower. The knower becomes embodied by, by us, he says. We become the yodea. The chelik yodea is something that we take on as in the process of creation. And the chelik yadua is materialized in the Torah. So you hear that? It's like... It's like in its source, Yodea, Yadua, Mada, this is all one consciousness in God. But in creation, it becomes separated out and there's like a there's like a coupling that happens where we become the knower and Torah becomes the known. And so we're therefore we therefore seek to know Torah because it's it's seeking after that lost part of ourselves. It's seeking to become whole again. So we, we as God was as Da'at is as Da'at is whole in its source. It's not that it's not whole anymore, but in the way that we live in this world, it's it's separated out, and we seek that unity. That he even quotes the Gemara that says, you know, 
a, a lover seeks after their, their missing part in, in, in a loving relationship. And we have that relationship with Torah, you say, where the Yodea is seeking the Yedua. Were you going to say something? That we're reclaiming or restoring the Achdut. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a, a, a search after unity. After he says, all of our avoda, all learning, all, everything we do, it's min yichud. It's all, it's all yichudim. It would be true of all kinds of knowledge, though, wouldn't it? Say what you mean. In other words... If the dot is, is all-encompassing, then right, maybe then anything. Then the, the exercise of, of unifying would not be exclusive to, to Torah, it seems. So is it true for all kinds of knowledge? It could be true for all kinds of knowledge, but there's something unique here. Something unique here that's more, uh, more, right, of, an, that's, more I mean, of an essential... Um, it's like the Torah is our soulmate. That's basically what he's saying. You know, um, some people might be really uh, on fire to, uh, you know, uh, learn biochemistry. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Doesn't mean other people aren't. But maybe that comes more to like what your particular neshama is drawn to. Mm-hmm. Here, it's more a klali vision that Am Yisrael seeks Torah, and it's because of this sort of severed part that we're looking to reclaim. Um, so he says that's the oneg. Of learning, that's why you learn something and, and it just like touches you, and you couldn't really explain what's so exciting about that. Of like, you finally understood like when when the cow gorges the this and the fa- oh now I get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Shankulam, <laughs> 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 So the other thing the other thing is that he says that when we learn so when we learn we're seeking out the Yodea is seeking the Yadua. But not of all our learning is like that, right? Like you don't always feel like, oh, I'm looking for something. I'm searching after something. I'm find- There's something to find here. Like Khalila, it sometimes just feels kind of like it's not there. So how do we position ourselves to be a seeker after Torah? How do we position ourselves with the Yodea seeking the Yadua? He says that gets planted in us when we daven. Mm-hmm. He says when we daven, we're not... We're, when we dive in, it's, it's just encountering a, a, a light that's undifferentiated. It's not the Odea and the Adua. It's not, it's not, it doesn't trickle down as much into very concrete things. First of all, when you're davening, you're not trying to know or understand, really. You're expressing, you're trying to connect, you're opening yourself, you're being in God's presence. You're seeking the whole thing at once. You know? You're not trying to just understand uh, a Mishnah. You're just being as present towards God and turning yourself towards God as much as you can. So there, that ore that pours in, it doesn't trickle down to those more concrete pieces of, you know, of an ox and a fence and a neighbor and a halacha and a gemara and, a, and words. It's, it's, it's all, it, it's potentially, ideally, the tefillah can be, can be a more all-encompassing felt experience. 
And he says just so beautifully, he says that the light that you absorb in tefillah, you then go out and, and, and learn in the Torah you learn. And we're going to want to find the sentence because he has a, just such a beautiful way of saying it. And, and again, I'm like cheapening it by trying to say this in a few sentences, but my uh, last So he says, Tefillah is something that's, it's hashra'ah shilamala mina secha. What, when, if you get, if you daven and you start like feeling really excited. It's like, what is going on there? Can you explain to somebody? If somebody asks you, like, what are you like gesticulating about? Why are you crying? Why are you smiling? Why are you moving your body that way? <laughs> There's nothing to explain on a seichel level. Okay. He says that in tefillah, and again I'm paraphrasing to catch us up and, and we'll continue, the ha'ara, the light that, the, the, that you touch in tefillah, ba'al le'etzem nafsho, ko'od lo chal ha'peirud. It touches you to your core in a place that's before. It precedes that separation, that distinction between I need to try to work to understand something with my brain and mind. My intellect isn't this narrow focus. It's touching me in a way that's more all-encompassing, that's more core. This klomar. Ha'or shebalo bish'at ha'tfila lomdo achar kach belimudo. The or that comes to you, the light that comes to you in your tfila, you then go and learn after in your Torah. It be, makes you into the yodea who's seeking a yadua. And, and how does that mm-hmm. work? Why is that the case? He's not just Stam saying if you daven and, and mutter off a mincha, it's you're <laughs> receiving or that you're there. He's saying the hitlavut of tefillah. If you're, you're daving in a way that you get passionate. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, or you're mitlahev. <laughs> you're aroused, you're, you're, you're turned on, you're activated. Something is touching you in the tefillah. That then positions you to be the seeker seeking the, that fullness on the level of knowing it now. It's like I tasted something, now when I learn Torah, I want to come in to know it. And, and I was thinking about this this week, I could try to just sort of make sense of it in a, in a few ways. Um, one, I think, very basic way is if you f- start with a, you feeling something, it gives you a sense of, you know, there's, there's really something here. There's really something here. I, I'll tell you, like just just a personal piece uh, uh, about myself. When I when I told my father when I was like you know in high school, I was like I want to go learn uh, in Israel in yeshiva, and he was like, "What are you going to do in yeshiva?" He's like, "They learn Torah in yeshiva. Like that's what they do all day. You don't learn Torah. You know, he's like, it wasn't you know? He's like, what what exactly is going on here? And uh, whatever, I'm not going to go into the whole story. But uh, and he was right. I wasn't learning. It wasn't like something that I was interested in. Um, wasn't particularly religious, you know. And uh, what I realized <clears throat> years later is the reason I wanted to go to yeshiva was I'd had a- experiences in my life where I felt like there's more here, like there's something here, like being in shul <laughs> on uh, the Yamin Noraim and feeling goosebumps at some moment, being at Sikhas Torah and feeling like elation, even without being in the knowing why or even what. Just feeling something there and just a sense of an inarticulate sense, of inexpressible sense of there's something here that I want to come to know now. I don't even know that that's what's driving me. I don't even mm-hmm. know what I want to know. I, right. I don't mm-hmm. even know what I want. I couldn't even say those words because I didn't know that. But there was a piece of me that had felt, oh, there's something here. And now, yeah, so the, the, the logical next step is I want to, to know it. I want it to, to absorb it. I want to digest. I want to have knowledge of what this thing is. And, and I think that there's another level where, where this is true, which is it doesn't just tell me that there's something there, but it, it, to, to feel something in, in davening or to just sort of absorb something on that level, it also lets me know on some level that, that I belong to this, that it mm-hmm. pertains to me, that I'm not really... An outsider. If it can touch me, it, it, it then draws me forward. There, I, I, I feel that there, there is something here for me too. So that's kind of the, some of the ways that I'm, I'm making sense of, of this. 
very beautiful and poetic way of speaking about it. And it's much more than this also. You know, the Rebbe's talking from like a very deep and broad perspective, but I'm, I'm trying to make it also tangible for us. Um, so let's go I'm at the bottom of page Tzadi Dalid. For uh, people who aren't here, we're in Der uh, Hamelech, Parshat Ve'era, page Tzadi Dalid in the old printing. You guys all have that? Does anybody have? You have? Okay, the last paragraph, Gam. See the word Gam? Gam ha'adam v'gam ha'torah mosifim or a'yidei tefilat Yisrael. I'll, I'll translate this. It's kind of literally to translate it, it will sound backwards. But the, what he's saying is that a person and the Torah, both the light of them get increased through our davening. Torah and people receive more light through 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 tefillah. Mosifim or aidei tefillah to Israel. He's going to explain. Ha'adam etayodea. We receive that light of the knower, the one who wants to know, the who seeks now. HaTorah et HaYadua. Torah becomes then the object that can be known. There's a really beautiful, really beautiful Zohar that, that the Rebbe quotes in another Sefer. I'm not going to quote it like word for word because I, I don't remember it, but it basically says, well, I'll bring it once for us to see, but it basically the Lashon is, that the Torah is only given to those who are known through it. Hmm. To be known through the Torah. That's where we receive Torah. Ishtimodah? Again, I'm not, I don't remember exactly what it is. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go on. Just that. Remind, remind me of um, so so, tefillah adds to us. It gives us more, and it actually, he says, Mosif or the Torah it makes the Torah shine, mm-hmm. makes the Torah attractive, it makes it a yadua. Migila to Torah Shabal Pei in Mo Yisrael. Now he's giving a practical, example. Where does Torah Shabal Pei come from? From from Am Yisrael. We expanded the Torah. We made more Torah. Listen to this. We poured so much light into the written Torah that God gave us. That the Torah just had to spread itself out and grow to become Torah Shabbat Yeah. I hear it. I yeah. don't understand it. <laughs> God gave us something and we made it more. Am Yisrael made it more. Am Yisrael made the Torah greater, more than it was. Our, our, our yearning and seeking after Kodesh Baruch Hu, after, after, and after the Torah is something that it actually made, created more Torah. The Torah says, these, what's Torah Shabbat Peh? What's the Gemara The Torah says something and we're all just trying to figure out what it means. We're all just trying to ladat. We're all trying to understand it and that expands, that makes the Torah more. We're mosifim, the Torah. Our understanding of Torah, our knowledge of Torah, it's not just an intellectual exercise or hakira or inquiry. Our under, what you understand in Torah is, is a revelation of or. I think he means here the excitement and passion we feel from Torah itself. That is part of what composes our very understanding of Torah. I'll read more because he's going to give a, a mashal to, for us to really get this. Right? Where do we get the or from? The main or we get when we dive in. You get from that, from that place where it's not just a portion of or, but it's like a, you get a big dose of it. Okay? But if you... If the tefillah has no... Nothing touches you there. Uvala ayen betorah besichlo bilvad, and so then you open a book of Torah, and all you're doing is is using your head. Harei domela ani bal cheshbon sheodei lechashev kamez chamishim pamim chamishim elav zehuvim. It's like a, a a a poor mathematician who wants to now understand how much is fifty times fifty thousand gold coins. Ve'eno zehuvim, but he has no coins. Velo oneg, and he has no real 
satisfaction from this inquiry, Bilti im Yavesh. He has his dry calculation. Now you may argue, oh, what do you mean? Someone who really loves math, they get a lot of excitement from math, right? Because he's all knowledge. You know? But 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 there's there's nothing he he actually he doesn't receive something from that. It's Poreh Bavir. It's a it's a dry calculation. It has no no meat to it, no lights to it. it has nothing to do with him. He doesn't right? have the gold. Because he he has no gold, and he gets nothing from it. He receives nothing from it. It's it's a it's a thought that he thinks of. Vechen gam hu shalohim shich bo or this is true too, he says now, somebody who's not mamshich or batfilah, we can't really draw in any light when we daven. Iyunoba Torah rak cheshbon yaveshu. Our inquiry into Torah is is rak cheshbon yavesh. It's just a dry calculation. Lo or, velo or. It's not light and it's not shining. Lo oneg, velo hitkalut. There's no oneg and there's no revelation. You understand something intellectually, and he says that it, it doesn't reach the rest of you. Ulehefich, and the same is true on the opposite end, right? That the tefillah needs the Torah. It's not Torah needs tefillah in this way to make it something that's revelatory, to make it something that's shining. Tefillah below Torah or Omnam Himshich, but lemala mimenu ulemala min haolam nishar haor. So if you if you daven. But you never learn. If you daven, but you never encounter Torah in a way that touches you. So, yes, you've, you've drawn light, but it remains beyond you and beyond the world. And you're enjoying just the search without ever... <laughs> what, what are you... <laughs> to his, to his <laughs> Perhaps. But, so, Perhaps. What, he, <clears throat> what he's saying, the light that we have becomes revealed when we're learning. Yes, the light that we draw down becomes revealed when we learn Torah, and, and specifically it becomes something that's known. And I think this is more what this point is. Tefillah, without Torah, you could like get high on tefillah all the time. But you won't really have much to say about it. It'll be an experience that's, that's disjointed and separate from, from down here. <laughs> it's Lamala Mimeno. It's Lamala Mimeno. I can touch something when I kind of go, go up to touch it, but it's not something that's in the Hebrew bashel. Like a, it's not like digested and, and ripened within me, such that I really have like a knowledge of it. The knowledge, knowledge without or he was discounting. Okay, dry intellect is is only worth so much, but but when or is digested, it becomes knowledge. That's very powerful. That's the yichud that he was talking about. That's finding something. That's you, you have something that, that is now forming your, your life and your understanding and your your orientation to the world. It's not just a sort of spiritual experience that, that exists outside of the world. We have to go there and bring it in. We have to receive from there and digest it and process it. And, and come to a place of knowing. That's the sort of whole picture that he's describing here. Ki the sikhlo lo higia, right? Because if it was just the tefillah and there's no Torah, <clears throat> it hasn't reached your mind. Velun nishtashel v'nichnas be'evarav. It's not just your mind. It hasn't, it hasn't trickled down and entered into your limbs. There's no embodied knowledge here. V'kevan shelo nimshach lamata az rak b'shat ha since it doesn't get drawn down more, so only in the time when you're davening, it's only when you take a step above the world and go attach to something in your tefillah when you, when you touch light. And then when you come back out of your tefillah into worldly living, so you become distant from, from your light also. This is like such a Chazak thing, I think. You know, like, Disjointed spiritual experience remains outside of us. 
And the, the, the goal here is to be able to, to integrate. To, to, yes, we need to go beyond Seichel. We need to go beyond the limited, um, bifurcated, very distinct kind of compartmentalized way that we live our lives. We need to go touch something that's, that's beyond that, which he says tefillah is an access point towards. And then it doesn't stop there. We need to, we need to integrate that in with our evarim. I just love this with our, our limbs, with our body, with our thoughts, with our mind, with our knowledge, with living in the world, living in the world. If you read the Torah, read the, the, the Gemara, like most of it has to do with like the world. It's not so much theology there. Like God's a character in it, you know. We talk with God. God talks with us. There's a communication there, but like most of it's it's not. We we don't have books of theology until you know thousands of years later. Maybe we're ready for another level of that. So. <laughs> This is a quote from the Gemara Brachos. In the place of song, that's where tefillah needs to be. The pshat of that Gemara means that uh, we daven in a shul because that's where people sing. It's just a really beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, we, we people only sing in a shul because we daven there. <laughs> what's what's the what's the hobby? The Gemara there is talking about being that, that you have to, the the value of davening in, in in a shul is because it's a place of song. It could be that the Gemara is saying that first and foremost that the uh, is a place where people come together and sing. Ah. It could be. could be. You should like, make banners and like, put them on every show, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but look what he's saying with it. Because what's the song? You cannot have real tefillah without rina. With, if it's not in a makom rina. Uh, huh? is pasuk that we yeah we have a piyutim about. Welcome. And you might have to look along uh, on the page because we moved to Tzadi. Hey, okay, somebody share. V'hit lahaviot v'hir gashiot shonot sericha ish Yisrael lahagish betorato v'tfilato. What is he? What is the Rebbe saying? Your tefillah should be in Makom Rina. It means that tefillah should be taking place in an environment that is that is exalted, that's elevated, that's pouring out. Right? Rina is, is, is it's, something bursts outward. There's, it's a place of song. Song is the context of for tefillah. I mean, the tefillah can't be dry either. Right? But Makom Rina, Shamtei Tefillah, Yev Shars Lazevelozen. You cannot have the kind of tefillah. Or, if it doesn't have, if it's not taking place, and I'll just share some with you, maybe, maybe this will be helpful. There's times when, when I'm in shul, when, a shul where people sing, yeah, where I'm just quiet and listening. And that's like, Mosif Latfila also. And sometimes it's because you got to sing, and sometimes it's even just being, you absorb from the singing. There's different qualities of hitlavut of of being aflame. <laughs> Literally, it's what it means, and and feeling hirgashiot and feelings that that he says we need to feel in Torah and in Tfila. I think what he's saying is that we need to be able to feel all kinds of things in Torah and Tefillah. Because, and listen to this, every hitlahavut, every time you become a flame in passion, an oneg ruchani, and a sense of, of a spiritual pleasure. Right? Again, the very basic question that, that, that we said at the beginning, like, why is it sometimes you'll be like singing or davening or even learning and, and you get filled with a very pleasant feeling? What in the world is that? What is that? I mean, really, you know? Like, what is that? Min hargashot onegan edeni. He's saying it's, it, you're, you're, you're getting a feeling of the pleasure of gan eden. Wow. 
There's something in the back of the Sefer here. The Rebbe has like a short piece on the Siyum HaShas that he gave over, where he has a drush on the difference between um, Kol Yisrael Yishem Chelek L'Olam Haba and Kol Hashem Alecho Muftach Lo Shu Ben Olam Haba. Kol what? Kol Hashem Alecho Pachol Yom Muftach Lo Shu Ben Olam Haba. Which is, uh, so there's a Mishnah that says everybody has a portion of the world to come. And, and there's another, another statement which says anyone who's learning um, is assured um, that they have, what is it, Muftach Lashu Ben Olam Haba, that they are a, a member of the world to come. So he says what that means is that right now, your Ben Olam Haba is right now. Chedek Olam Haba is like one day in the future. But liot ben olam haba in in that in that statement of, of learning is is talking about tasting olam haba right now. V'yafesh achat b'olam hazeh v'torah mitzvot v'torah mitzvot b'olam hazeh mikol chayi olam haba. Now it is a hmm. Here it says mikol chayi olam haba, but uh, it's not the full. It's not the full. Uh, I think it's perke avos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so but so it's saying so so he starts saying that we we get it that the feeling so just just hear this first that the feeling that you feel the a pleasant feeling you feel in in tefillah and Torah and holy things it's it's a taste of the feeling of of Gan Eden is what he says okay and we we hear from the Chachamim that a moment of Torah tefillah masim tovim in this world is greater than all of Chayalam Haba it's greater than all of it. However, Rakshibolam Haze, Hagashazuk Tanabe Erka, Bechinani Tzotz Bilvad. It might be greater than El Chayel Maba, it might be more important. I'm, you know, there's different ways of understanding that, um, more beautiful, different ways of understanding that, that Mishnah. But he's saying the difference is that in Alam Haze, why, why is it that you don't, like, all of a sudden you see, like, you know, you know you're in Alam Haba, you're going to hate it? He's saying the Hagasha is Ktanabe Erka, Bechinani Tzotz Bilvad. It's Yafesh Achab Alam Haze, but it's in a very small dose. Mm-hmm. We get a very small taste of it. It's a spark. Mm-hmm. And in Gan Eden itself, it's it's much greater degree, a fuller experience. Hitlavut Muruba, great passion. The Haneshamot im Gan Eden Meleim over Meonig. The the Neshamot in Gan Eden, the souls in, in the Garden of Eden are simply filled with this light and this pleasure. So now look what he's going to do with this. He's, he's not going to unpack for us right? every feeling of Torah and Tefillah, the ple- pleasant feeling that you can have is a taste of a, of a feeling of Olam Haba, of Gan Eden. He's going to break up for us different kinds of Gan Eden that we experience. Let's hear what he says. Hine b'v'chinan Gan Eden ro'im b'gemara shtei b'chinot. The Gemara talks about two different, describes Gan Eden, describes the experience of Gan Eden in two different ways. One is tzadikim ein lahem menucha, lo b'alam hazeh v'lo b'alam haba. Shnamar yelchu michael chayo. One description is that tzadikim, righteous people, never have any rest. Not in this world, not in the next world. Why yelchu michael chayo? Pasuk says you should always be walking from strength to strength, from one achievement to another achievement, from one level to another level. So Yikim don't ever get to rest because they're always pushing forward. So that's one description of Olam Haba. It's also you, no rest in this world, no rest there either. <laughs> Walking. The second one is that Tzadikim are sitting. And their crowns are, are, on, their, are on their heads. And they're, they're receiving pleasure from the light of, of the Shekhinah. Sounds like two, different, two totally different pictures, right? The Gan Eden, that's about walking, is a place where Tzadikim don't have any rest. When the Gan Eden of sitting, they're, they're having pleasure. They're just sitting there delighting, basking. That description of 
Gan Eden, where you're constantly walking and not resting, it doesn't mean that there's no onig there. It doesn't mean that there's no pleasure. Kilo Gehenim Hu. It's not hell. Rak Gan Eden. Aval im began Eden Shomala Ein Lanu Hasaga. We're talking about real Gan Eden. He's saying, we, we really don't know what this means. Ein Lan, Ein Lan, we have no idea. Aval Behe Arad Gan Eden Bo Lam Hazeh. But in the light of Gan Eden that exists in this world, Shiherat Olam Elyon, which is when the, the, the higher world, higher levels of, of being, of, of existence, sort of shine a, a ray of light to us in our world. It's like we, we can understand these two qualities of walking and sitting in our own experience of Gan Eden in this world. In davening, what touches you, what he says, the light that pours into you, it's above your knowledge. It's not an intellectual, it's not contained by the intellect. There's a pleasure and a yearning to know that light which has entered into you that's above your knowledge. Right? You want to attach yourself to this thing that you're experiencing, but it's not something that's intellectual. You don't know something that you identify that you want to now grab onto. Min ein lahem menucha hi shelo hishlim et asher it's that type of Gan Eden asher ein lahem menucha. It's that type of Gan Eden where you don't find rest because lo hishlim et asher You never really come to know anything in tefillah. You, you're touched by it. That's, I think, what the gentleman here before was talking about the chipus, the oneg of chipus. Right? They were searching. You're, you, you get touched by something. You just want to want to attach to it. Veikut, but you never fully get there because it never becomes totally digest, wholly digested by you. You, you have oneg. I mean, just, you have oneg, but it's an oneg that's not concrete. Also, something like this, which is so infinite, you can never have it completely. So even though you're doing it, you're always longing for more. So even mm-hmm. in the happiness, you still want more. And it never mm-hmm. Ends. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And this is something the Rebbe said earlier, that what, we, what we're able to touch in our tefillah is something that it hasn't been so distilled and broken down into, into s- smaller portions. It's just, it's, it's still more unified. And so we can't fully grasp and internalize it. But we can try to grab on. But we can't grab on. And we have pleasure in that. There's a pleasure in that. That's the moment. There's a pleasure in that. Balo or ve'eno misigo. A light comes to you and you can't comprehend it. makiro. And you're grabbing onto it, but you can't know it. It's a very beautiful description. Beautiful. It's like you're touching something that you can't know what it is. The Kokach Lama. Why? Why is it like this? Because <laughs> now you're in that quality of Gan Eden, which is Yelchu Mechayel Echad, where you're walking. You're, you're moving towards something. Right? That image of Tzadikim walking, Mechayel Echad, means that there's constantly something new to be discovered. There's always going to be more. So what you're touching in tefillah, that is that sort of both connecting and longing at the same time, having but not having, wanting more, you're touching or chadash. It's like there's constantly something new, something not yet, that's being, that's pouring into you that you're touching. Tzadikim ein lahem menucha lo velo so tzadikim don't have menucha. Their the constant search is not only in this world, also in the next world. All we know is the gan eden in this world is the taste of some uh, again oneg ruchani, some kind of feeling of, of elation in this world. Shehu oneg im heeder menucha yachad. It's delight, it's pleasure, along with. A lack of rest at the same time. Insatiable delight. 
You're in that. That's the state of Yelchu. That's the state of walking in Gan Eden mm. that we can taste. The state of walking in Gan Eden is just being filled with some feeling that you can't fully grasp, that it doesn't end necessarily. <clears throat> you're, just, you're touching it and you don't have a full intellectual knowledge of what it is. There's always more to seek there. I, I would say on some level, it's also like it's completely mysterious. It's like very present and very unknowable or unknown. And that's an onik, that's a type of onik. That's the type of onik of tefillah. Avaba Torah, shikfar hisig haor betfila. But when a person who's experienced some of that seeks to connect in Torah, And he explained this earlier. He says, what happens when you sort of um, transmit or transpose, maybe is the word, that light of, of tefillah, that elation of tefillah, and you transfer that over to learning Torah, he says, really what's happening is just that that light is becoming digested and absorbed by your limbs and your mind now. It's not that you're learning something that was outside that's outside of you it was like downloaded into you but there was no unfolding of it there was no coming to know it again he said what he said earlier the light we receive in our tefillah we then go and learn in our torah, in our torah i'm all i'm doing is coming to know that thing that touched me umevin mashi hi sig mikodem and you can come to have some understanding of that unknown thing that you touched previously. It's not just, it's not the oneg with heder menucha. It's not the, ple- the delight with a lack of, of cessation, of, of no rest. It's, it's simple delight. Okay, I don't, I don't know that it's so sort of like, like there's one way to read this and say it's very sort of step one, step two. Mm-hmm. Like you, you daven, you have an awesome davening, and then you go and open it safer, and boom, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe that can happen. Maybe that's what he's talking about. And maybe another way is like, there's part of me that knows that there's something awesome and, and beyond. This thing, God. Some, some of me knows some of that. And then there's like a moment when I learn and it sort of all of a sudden hits me. I'm like, wow, that, that, that real thing is here. That real thing is knowable somehow. It, even in a small little bite-sized knowable, but is, is, is something really like here and, and, and more accessible even than I thought. You know, I think that we can, we can see this on, on, a, on, a, on a broader sort of spectrum too. It's not... I think the Rebbe is also giving us some some direction here, which is like, put everything you got into davening, and and don't don't let it fizzle out, don't let don't let you don't, don't lose your moments of inspiration, apply them, unpack them, take that passion to to Torah, because that thing that you're touching in tefillah, it's there in Torah too. I think like the, the simply stated that that's what the Rebbe has been telling us. I and mean, we talked to about Rabbi Nachman last week. Rabbi Nachman said, the, the Misnagim say, Torah, 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 learn, 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 learn. Chassidim say, Tefillah, 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 Daven, 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 Daven. He said, I say, Torah, Tefillah, Torah, Tefillah, learn and Daven, learn and Daven, learn and Daven, learn and Daven, right? We said, we're mini yichudu. We're always, we need to be creating yichudim in our, in our voda. Mm-hmm. And to, to seek out more, to, to have a thirst for more, we have to feel something that's beyond us. And, to have a little bit of a satisfying taste of what that thing is, to have a little, like you, you're thirsty and then you have a little bit of water, that, that comes in, in learning too. That comes and then you have something that you can carry with you. You have something that's, that's known. What's greda? Hmm? Greda. Greda? Greda. greda is like, hmm, what's the English word for this? Onig greda means bonafide. like... Bonafide. <laughs> bonafide. Or even just, that's all it is. Yeah. It's all on. It's only exclusively, exclusively onik. It's not onik with head or menucha. It's just onik. By itself. Yeah. Is there an A? Yeah. Mm-hmm.
the tzadikim yoshvim, kshem yoshvim v'lochim. So the image of tzadikim sitting, not walking, right? The other image of Gan Eden. Kikfar di barnu hachiluk shedvar oneg tzarich shiva v'dvar she'eno oneg amida v'chen ida bazar kadosh. I don't know what he means by kfar di barnu. I don't know what he's referring to, but he says that something that you take pleasure in, you need to sit. And something that doesn't have pleasure, you're walking. And he says this is brought in the Zara too. Uh, he says Kfar di Barnu Misa. You talked about this. So I trust him. I don't is there a chiluk between Amida versus Halicha? Ah, and so he says Amida here. Tov. It, it must have to do with. Uh, I assume in the Zara it might have to do something with uh, the Seder of Tfila. That's what comes to mind. But I don't know because I don't know what he's referring to. Um, Right, the tzadikim who are sitting there, basking in the light of of, of God, basking nehenim is ivashchina. All they're doing there is delighting, and they're sitting lo in the menucha. They're not without rest. They're not the ones who are constantly looking for more. Right, their crowns are in their heads. What does that mean? So you see here the drush is saying it's not that the crown is upon their head. It's not atrotem al roshehem. The crown, that thing that they knew or didn't quite know, that hovered above the head like a crown, is now bi roshehem. It's now in their heads. That accessing God beyond the mind has now been absorbed by the mind. About crowns? Um, on that it's something b- above your head? Yeah, like when what are you thinking of? Like um, when the Jews got two crowns. Ah. But it was above their head and it wasn't in time. So there was a time when it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, I, I can't. I'm not inclined to say, like, every time you see this idea, like, this is what it means, you know? Um, Rabbi Nachman has a, has a Torah actually about this process of Torah and Tefillah building on each other, about knowing and not knowing, kind of meeting each other. And he brings that Gemara of the crowns, the, top, the two crowns. And it's, it's part of that a similar process that he's describing. So I'm just saying, you know, you can look in the Kutay Maran, Torah Kaf Bet 22, um, to, see, to see Rabbi Nachman deal with, with this concept. Um, but there is uh, oftentimes, like in, in in Kabbalistic symbolism, when we talk about keter as being the crown, it's specifically something that's that's not internalized. It's something that sits sits above, that exists above. Okay? It's like a surrounding um, entity. It's not something that's really absorbed all the way through. So the crown that was at one time be above the head, it's now entered in. So that's the sitting. That's that's the oneg of, of of Torah. What's the place where you learn Torah called? A sit, a sit house. <laughs> um, it's an absorbing, absorbing it in. Knesset is like movement. It's kones, like gathering together, walking. Bichlal, bichlal, tefillah. You stand. Amida. I think that you know, might be part of it. Amida. The tefillah. It's like it's. I'm, I'm, I'm standing because there's something. I'm not just taking something in. I'm also moving, searching after something. Kefi haor shenit galelo b'tefila ken mevin bilimudo. According to the light that is revealed to. To a person in their tefillah, you have the picture. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so yeah. follow with him. Ken mevin bilimudo. That according to that kind of light, that's what you're able to understand in your learning, right? Again, what did he say? Understanding Torah means it's not just what we comprehend with our minds. It's it's the hitla havut of Torah. It's the part of Torah that like really touches us. That's the Torah that that's the Torah we know. The Torah you really understand is the Torah that really really makes a mark on you. According to the yearning and lack of rest over that light, that holiness that you are 
hugging and not knowing what it is in your hand. Of tefillah, that's the experience of tefillah that the Rebbe is describing. Hugging and not knowing. I don't know what I'm holding. <laughs> I'm, I'm thirsting for what's here. Wow. Ken ta'anu go batorah. According to the degree that we can have some of that, we're going to be able to, to receive some, some real pleasure in, in Torah also. It's a pretty high aspiration. Like how often is this our experience of tefillah? How often is this our experience of Torah? The Rebbe's giving us a map. You know, he's giving us some guide, guidelines. He's giving us some street sign. I'll just, I'll just say outside to expand a little bit something that uh, we've already seen together a few times, but that uh, the Pesachna says many times is he really not only allows us but encourages us to embrace the, the feelings and experiences that, that are not something that we really know. That thing that you feel that you don't know what it is, it's important. It's important. Don't dismiss it. Don't ignore it. You might not even make sense of it, but but it's yeah. there, there. There can be that's real too. That is real. You know, there's there's yesh God is beyond our knowing. Guess what? God touches us beyond our knowing also. Hatfilahi or lamala mimenu. Tfila is a light that is above us. Beyond us, uba Torah mamshicho leolam ulekirbo, and in Torah we are drawing that same very light into the world and into ourselves. Vimeinon lomed, and if you don't learn, nishar haor rak lishat hatfila kshehit ala atzmol hatfila. If we don't ever learn Torah, if we don't ever find holiness in Torah, so then that light it remains only for that, those moments of tefillah, when we lift ourselves up a little bit. And then we're left without any light because we haven't drawn it into us. Ah, now the Rebbe is helping us a little more here. If, if not every person feels this every day when they daven, there might be one time in the year where you feel something. That could be enough to get you going. That could be enough. Forget could be enough. That's what you have to hold on to. That's what you have to draw into yourself. Don't say, you know, Yom Kippur was so awesome and now look where I am. Yom Kippur was awesome. That was something real. Carry that with you. Trust what you felt and try to make that bridge. Trust. Open the Torah and with the knowledge that what I felt that was so real there, you know, it really was real, but I haven't yet come to understand it yet. I don't really know it yet. So I'm going to search it. I'm going to search for it now. I'm going to, I'm going to be a Yodea looking for the Yodua. A kopanim, right? You can feel it a little on these t- special times of year, or special times of the week. Shemargish bo kedusha, shenit kadesh. That you feel a little bit of something. Something was like, oh, I felt really, there was a feeling of something holy. Ul machrato shal yom tov shul nof shuv nofel amatzavo. But on Yisru Chag, I'm, I'm back, I fall back to the place I was before. V'kolze b'gla shalola mad il kirbo et orat fila shaita lamalam imenu. This happens because we haven't learned into our insides. We haven't learned that light inside of ourselves that came to us in tefillah, that was above us. So that light of tefillah, it remained in tefillah and it stayed there. Now someone, this is just awesome how he applies this. What does it mean, Yafesha Achat Pachuva? In this world, what does it mean that a moment of what well, I think it was Torah Masim Tovim, Chuva Masim Tovim, a moment of being holy? <laughs> Let's just say with that, you know, doing being in a holy place in this world. What is that moment about? What he brought earlier from the Mara, from the Mishnah, is that you need to 
Right, the Hasidim Rishonim would be Shoim Shacham Yitpalim. It means that people who really devoted themselves to Tefillah, they would wait, they would meditate, they would prepare themselves for a whole hour before davening. Before davening, just to get themselves into that state. So it sounds like in the, from the Gemara that you need to utilize a mo- this moment, this Sha'achat for Tefillah. The light of the Sha'a, the experience of the moment, needs to be drawn into the world. That moment needs to not just have been a moment. That moment needs to become integrated into our lives. Right? This is a beautiful thing, the word olam, the word le olam. It means to the place. Olam le olam also means eternal. It means always. It's this beautiful thing that le olam we use to mean place and time. But it's it's the whole life, it's the whole existence, worldly existence. Sha'a needs to become olam. Okay, let's listen to what he says. Via fish olam hazeh. What does the Mishnah mean when it says Yafesha Achat Pichuva Masim Tovi Baolam Hazeh? What does it mean that a moment of holiness in this world is beautiful? It, it's when the moment becomes integrated into the world. Sha'achat ba'olam hazeh. Not a fleeting moment that happened and then you, Isukhag happens and you're back where you were before. We probably all know that one. Maybe not all of us. I know that one. But when the moment gets drawn into my, my very life, when I really am able to absorb and digest and internalize that experience to become part of me. We can understand now the words of Rava. Rava saw Rav Hamnuna davening for a very long time. And he said, He's abandoning the life of He's abandoning Chai Olam, which most people understand the Gemara is eternal life for Chai Sha'a, for momentary life. Which he's basically saying, No, stop davening so long, you should be learning Torah. Torah is Chai Olam. It's eternal. It's, it's eternal and it's also worldly. And he's just there in Chai Sha'a. He's just holding on to that momentary experience. Now, what does he really mean in, in this context? He says, because Rav Amnuna was, was, was really just, all he was concerned with there was davening, and he didn't concern himself, liumot tekef, tekef, what we were saying before, the Rebbe saying, you know what, take it to learning right away. Take it to learn right away. Don't let it go to waste. You have inspiration, soak in it, and then learn it. Soak in it, and then learn it out. But what, what Rabba was saying about Rav Hamnuna is he's not bringing that moment into his life. He's not bringing that tefillah, that light from Sha'a to Olam. He's not making it something that's going to last. He's not drawing it down. V'nish aretz lo rak Sha'a v'lo Olam. He came away from tefillah with a moment, but not with a world, and not with an eternal knowing. It's so awesome. It's so awesome to, that, to speak to that feeling of, I think what many of us experience about, you know, it's so easy to, 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 lose the, to lose hold of those important moments in life because they were moments and they happened and now we are where we are. And the Rebbe's trying to help us not let those things come and go. First, he's trying to help us learn how do you seek it out? He's describing to us what is possible in tefillah. Just search and yearn and hold on. The yelchu, the oneg you can have in tefillah is the oneg of yelchu, of, of moving towards something, just turning towards something, wanting something. And then, don't squander it. When when you when you when you when you when you're touched by by something, don't let it slip away. Like something that I, I said last week is that I think we experience the God that we dive into and the God we learn from as being two different things. Mm-hmm. 
It's her- heretical to say that, right? But like, that's uh, that's kind of a, it's like oh davening, and then like Torah. But really, what what it is is that we're just we're utilizing different parts of us for those things, and we then just we we experience them as being things that are totally different. And and he's saying here, draw it in, draw the bridge, know that it's that it's one thing. So Rav, Rav was saying that when, when Rav Hamnuna, if he's davening and davening and davening, he's not applying that. What, he, what he's davening, he's not applying that to his learning. So he's separating between Olam L'Sha'ah Shal Yafesh Ha'achap Olam He's not fulfilling that beauty of bringing a Sha'ah of Gan Eden into life of this world. It's staying in that moment. Uh, you have to get going? You have your appointment? Okay, I'm, I'm going to read on the last few few lines because it's, it's an important thing to add, okay? I'll try, I'll, I'm going to read these last two uh, mini paragraphs quickly, ish, because we're, we're coming to the end of our time, but it's an important like piece that uh, that is added here. Avalo b'limud b'yum b'lvad namshichim et olam it's not only in in-depth learning that we're able to draw that light of tefillah into Torah. I think this is very good to hear also because it's like, you know, not all of us are able to have that kind of like learning. We don't always or even have the time for that or the interest for that, the motivation. Like there's other ways. It's not just spending hours learning that's going to help you absorb absorb that. Ki adam adam. Right? The whole thing here is to be able to absorb a light that's beyond us into ourselves. But he's saying, you know, your mind is only one part of you. Even though it's the most, uh, the choicest piece, like your, your mind is, is able to do things that no other part of you can do. It's still just a part. It's still just a part. There's many other strengths, abilities in your body. If you don't draw in the light of tefillah to any part of you other than your your intellect in Torah, other than your knowing, you've only drawn it to that specific part of you. You can't absorb all of that light of tefillah just by learning and just by using your mind. I think I mentioned if, uh, at some point this Gemara where Bruria saw Atami learning but quietly and she kicked him. Mm-hmm. And she's like, if you learn with like, by, by using your voice, then the Torah is going to Gonna really enter into you. Gemara and Sukkot, the Pasuk Gemara and Sukkot. Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't remember where it is exactly, but there's a similar thing. That like, use your kochot, use all of your energies. Your all, your all parts of you are are not only able to absorb kedusha, but are necessary. Are necessary. You don't want to just have a holy mind and a and a not a holy, you know, ninety whatever percent of the rest of you. You you were still leaving part of the chay sha'a untapped. We're still leaving part of that. Holiness un, unknown if we don't use the, our other our other parts and strengths. Mm-hmm. We need to serve God with our bodies. Pashut, the simplest meaning of that should The simplest meaning of that is you gotta just do mitzvot with your body. Imagine you daven, imagine you learn a lot, but like the mitzvah is there. So he's like the, the 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 most basic thing is, and and I think he's telling us too, like no. Bring that consciousness to doing mitzvot. Bring that consciousness to your action. That you're not just kind of like following a, a command and an order here. You're, you're drawing God's light to your being. You're drawing God's light into your being. Abachutz mizeh. Not beyond just the fact that we have to actually do, which is avodat goof in the simplest way. Tzarichu liyaget atzmo. We need to put ourselves into it. We need to exert ourselves. We use our, our strengths. It's not enough to just do. Just, I learned now, and now I do a mitzvah, and now I do this thing. Like, you'd have a very pretty schedule 
but not exert any part of yourself. There's n- nothing of, from, of you has been uncovered through that. Ki hagiya motzia koach aguf, right? The hagiya exerting ourselves, really putting ourselves into something, is what brings out the strength, the powers, the capabilities of the body, the energy of the body. Uva Torah im eno lomen min asafa v'dachutz rakovin mamash b'chol eivarav. If in Torah you're not just learning, it's not just lip service misafa v'dachutz. Rakovin mamash b'chol eivarav, but you're really working with all of your limbs when you learn. You're putting, you're bringing all of yourself to the learning. V'chen b'mitzvot and with mitzvot too, you're really putting yourself into it. Az hu motzi koach gufo, hu machlifo bekoach hakedusha shechofef al rosho mitfilato. You're putting out energy of your body and exchanging it. This is just translating in his words, and I'll try to explain to the best again. You're putting out the the koach, the energy of your body, and in exchange, you're receiving the koach hakedusha, that holy energy that. Is sort of hovering beyond you and outside of you that you that you touched in tefillah. Again, it becomes absorbed in your limbs, in your body. Not just knowing intellectually, but you can you can let it sink into all of you by putting yourself more into into your learning and into your mitzvot. I'll just finish the sentence. And if you don't exert yourself, if you don't exert yourself and put out in 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 Torah and in doing mitzvot, he said he says that there's no room for that holy energy to to, to trickle in. I think part of what he means very simply is we have to make space for holiness in our lives. We have to make space for God in our lives. Davening is one place of making space, but it doesn't really become absorbed. For it to really become absorbed, because think about this, right? The tefillah is like this or that, I, that is unknown. How do I bring or that is unknown into me? How does it become known? One way is I seek it in Torah. And that is a, intellectually, okay, is something that starts with not knowing. I'm bringing that, un, I'm starting with that unknown and I'm, I'm digging into it and trying to come to know it. I'm exerting my mind to move from unknown to known. But with my body too, I don't know what's... What, I'm going to do a mitzvah. Okay, it's a mitzvah. Why should I put myself into it? Why should I throw myself into it? Why should I abandon my sort of comfort when I do it? There's another process there of throwing myself into unknown. It's on a smaller scale, Right? To exert myself, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a chance. I'm saying, you know, God, if you're in this, like, I'm really going to go for it. And, and, and there's just there's a beautiful thing that my, my body's energy can be sort of re-energized by something holy there. I think about Sifu Stora. I think about Sifu Stora. You dance, you sing, you dance, you sing. <clears throat> At some point, like, you don't feel tired. You feel energized, right? When you, when, you, when you get your body into holy activity, it energizes you. What is that energy? What is that energy? So you could say, well, the body, you know, if you exercise also, you get energized. Well, but he's saying, no, you're, you're making space to be enlivened by something holy. Yeah. I'm sitting down and my body looks like so tired and going on. I think that's dancing also and all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yom Kippur is, I mean, Yom Kippur, that's, on some level, that's all of what we do in Yom Kippur is we replace mm-hmm. our Koch with Koch Kedusha. Like the five Inuim of Yom Kippur, the five things that we um, refrain from on Yom Kippur are basically the five sources of vitality that we turn to the rest of the year. And that, so today we're saying, you know, my life comes from God. I want to get life from God. So I'm going to just take away all those other resources and, and step into a, a different flow of work. So we're going to end here um, because time's up. But uh, 
I think this last piece is really important because the Rebbe is sort of like bringing it down to like you know, nuts and bolts. So like, you know, when you do stuff like you really do it, you want this stuff to be meaningful. Like, put yourself in it. Maybe it won't happen immediately. You know, it's nothing here is magic, but we have sort of again like map a map points along the way. Feeling that you could feel in tefillah something that's not an intellectual exercise is an or gadol that you're able to then absorb and digest and bring into you. Wanting to come to know something in tefillah is, is seeking that wholeness that you know exists for you, but you haven't yet known in this way. And by, by really giving ourselves into, into Torah and by really giving ourselves into, into our actions, when we're doing things for, for Hashem, some, it makes room for things, something to, tr- to trickle in and, and, uh, and start to become part of us in a, in a realer way, in a holer way. Shkoyach. Thanks for coming. Thanks for learning this story with me. I've been wanting to learn this uh, with people for a long time. Um, great.